My name is Cricket. I'm an alter in a DID system. DID stands for Dissociative Identity Disorder, and it was formerly known as Multiple Personality Disorder. I'm gonna have to stumble through this video because I'm so nervous. I'm sorry if I'm awkward. So first off, welcome to our channel if you're new, and if you're someone who's already subscribed, thanks for coming back. Our channel is dedicated to breaking down the stigma surrounding DID, BPD, and just mental illness in general. And we do this through education and allowing our viewers to get a glimpse into what we have to go through living with dissociative identity disorder. So strap yourself in because our life is very confusing. Also, please note we're not professionals. We are professionally diagnosed with DID and BPD, but we're not doctors. Everything we put into our content is things we have learned through our professionals and our own experiences living with DID. In our very first video, you got to meet our host, Natasha. She did like a really small introduction. We are very soon going to get to introductions for different alters, so you will also get to know her a little bit more and everybody else. But in today's video, I'm going to break down what DID is and why it is developed in the first place. I'm also going to tell you about symptoms that we have or had growing up. Some of these symptoms are going to be common throughout all DID, but we know we have some uncommon symptoms as well. So what is DID? DID is a mental disorder where two or more very distinct individuals present in one body. These different personalities are referred to as alternate states of consciousness, but more commonly as alters. You're also going to hear me and other alters in this body refer to ourselves as a system. A system is a pretty common term that is used amongst the community, and it basically means the entire collective of alters within that body. So everybody in this body together is called a system. There are some systems out there that don't like the term alters, which is totally valid. Instead of the term term alter, you might hear terms like part or member. You know, a lot of systems that call their alters parts instead in reference to alters. As far as I know, everybody in our system doesn't mind the term alter. We often get asked if there is a certain limit to the amount of alters that can be in a system. And no, there isn't. Systems can be as small as two or three alters, and then some systems can have hundreds. Over a hundred alters is referred to as a polyfragmented system. We're not a polyfragmented system. But when we were first diagnosed, we were introduced to another professionally diagnosed system, and they had about 1,200 presenting alters, which I can't even imagine. We can barely handle the amount that we have and it's like, I don't know, under 20 maybe. <laughs> Recently, we went through a lot of changes in our system. We had some fusions. So right now, we're actually not 100% sure how many of us are in the system. It might take a while for us to figure that out again. Every alter in a system is going to be their own unique person. Just because our body identifies with she, her pronouns, presents female, that doesn't mean all of our alters do. We have alters that identify as male, female. I identify as non-binary. My pronouns are they, them. There are alters in systems that don't want a gender identity. You might come across a system where all alters identify as female or all male, but alters in a system can have their own looks, their own identities, their own names. Alters in our system are very uniquely individual. Every system's going to be different though. It's gonna vary. Also, another interesting thing that usually actually throws people off quite a bit, is alters can identify as non-human. That seems to shock people a lot. We are going to do a video specifically about non-human alters, but alters don't have to identify as human. They can identify as a mythological creature. They can identify as a concept. They also can be inanimate objects. So now that you know what dissociative identity disorder actually is, I'm going to tell you why it develops. DID is a trauma response disorder. It is a very complex survival mechanism that develops within a child's brain during a certain point of brain development. And it can only develop in that time frame of a child's brain development when that child is experiencing severe repeated trauma. You cannot be born with DID. It's not genetic. So this disorder can only develop during a certain time frame. There's some debate on like the exact age when DID develops. Our professionals have told us it's before the age nine, but in some cases it can be before the age 12. After that, 
you cannot develop DID. Your personality, your brain has already gone through that developmental process. Now that we are working with professionals and being able to address some of our trauma that was experienced, we are now able to say that our DID started developing about the age of four. Systems might not actually be realized until later on in life, maybe into adulthood. It's not uncommon. A lot of the times there are amnesic barriers between alters, which creates kind of like a darkness between each other, you don't actually know you exist together. This disorder too is also really hard to spot. It is developed to be a covert survival mechanism. Alters will naturally mask as each other as best as possible so it makes it appear like they are one cohesive person. And that's in order to keep that system and that body safe. By having different people within that body being able to handle certain things, memories, feelings, experiences, and still fly under the radar of being noticed is exactly what DID does to keep that body and that system alive. We actually did not know we were a system until we were diagnosed. And that's because we did have amnesic barriers between different people. We had to work with professionals in order to bring those barriers down and be able to communicate with each other and be aware of each other. And because masking is such a natural thing for systems, we masked for a really long time without even realizing it. It was only until the body entered teen years that our masking was becoming less and less. It was harder to do. Things that we were experiencing and how others were behaving. Looking back now, we do realize it is all symptoms of our DID and our BPD. There are some common symptoms that you will find in DID, no matter what the system. But again, every system is going to be a little different. For us, the biggest symptom was memory loss. Natasha, our host, could remember what she had for dinner, but then couldn't remember like the last four months or the last couple days, or what happened in a part of a day. People in our system at that time, including Natasha, had absolutely no idea what was going on. We were a mess because we had no communication between each other. We didn't know we had DID. We, it was just very chaotic. For people interacting with us on the outside, we were told all the time that we had erratic mood swings. So we could go from interacting with someone very positively, having a nice chat, being very outgoing, and then maybe two minutes later, we become very reclusive. We don't want anything to do with them or we don't know what we're talking about. So that can be really difficult for people that interact with us. Even now, we don't socialize a whole bunch because it is hard to interact with people when they don't understand DID. And now we get really self-conscious about it. To people on the outside, we probably look crazy. And trying to explain to someone about having multiple personalities, you can get a couple different reactions. Not all of them are positive. Another thing that everyone experiences even now is not having a true sense of self. Never feeling comfortable in this body. Another symptom that actually Natasha's parents, the parents of this body, now look back and understand why this happened. We could go from really liking something and being really good at something to suddenly hating it, and not knowing much about it. Different alters in a system are going to be drawn to different things. They're not all going to like the same thing. So it really made us look like a yo-yo. We were all over the place with things that we enjoyed and things that we didn't like, including hobbies, people, food. Finally, another huge symptom that we had is people were always saying that we were really good at zoning out and it wasn't your typical daydreaming. It was hardcore dissociation. We don't remember when we dissociate, so we were told this. We would sometimes just stare off into space for hours. Sometimes it was a few minutes. Actually thinking about that, that probably should have been looked into. <laughs> But yeah, dissociating is not your typical just kind of spacing out. It is mentally removing yourself from your surroundings, what is going on, and disconnecting completely with yourself. Another thing that looking back makes more sense now is we absolutely despised school. We can't retain that amount of information in a short period of time because somebody would be fronting for the beginning of a class and then maybe we would switch halfway through and the next person would not know what's going on. And teachers just thought we were lazy and they were really hard on us because they didn't understand what was happening and we didn't understand. We had tutors for everything. The only classes that we seemed to be able to get through were when we were focusing on art or English. Art itself as well as English like reading, poetry, that kind of thing. Writing is very grounding for us so we were actually able to get through those classes pretty good. 
Everything else was a nightmare. We did end up graduating with pretty great marks and we followed up by going to university and we completely flunked out in under a year. School is hard. And because we were experiencing the things that were going on, we pulled away from our classmates. We were not popular by any means. We were kind of like that stereotypical weird little art kid who everybody thought was weird. And we were bullied severely. One of our more uncommon symptoms is we always hear mumbling. It's like when the TV is going, but the volume is so low, you can't really make out what's happening on the TV, but you know it's on, you can hear it. And this doesn't stop for us. It is all the time. And that doesn't happen to a lot of systems. A lot of systems will hear each other and interact with each other, but it isn't always completely constant. But it is for us. Our next video, someone is going to actually go into how dissociative identity disorder actually develops, what goes on in the brain. But I hope this helps you understand what DID is and why it develops. I'm sorry if I rambled through that entire thing, <laughs> but I hope it helped. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of us, please hit the subscribe button. We are very grateful to all of our subscribers. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>